guys, welcome back to another lesson in Swift for Beginners. We covered guard statements in the last lesson, and in today's lesson, we will be covering enums and switch statements. So we're, we will be picking up uh, exactly where we left off with guard statements right here. So let's start by getting rid of all of this, and let's uh, change our title up here to show that we are working with enums and switch statements. So we're going to start with enums and then we will transition into switch statements as I think um, they kind of go hand in hand to a degree. So an enum is a type of um, data structure slash way to represent. It's not really a data structure exactly, but it's a way to represent multiple cases. So an enum, um, let's start by creating one so we can actually see it. So you would use a keyword enum and let's call this um, Let's call this enum states, right? And an enum can have multiple cases. So let's say this enum represents a state of uh, a person registering for a particular service, right? We could have a case that says um, in progress. We can have a case that says um, aborted. We can have a case that says uh, complete. Maybe we can have a case that says will start. So an enum basically is a way to represent multiple states. Um, and you do that through cases. And this could be super helpful for the sake of kind of adding guardrails around what your program and your code actually does. So someone might say like, well, wait a second. Why can't I put this in a string? Why can't I do something like var um, current state? And I can do like complete. The answer to that question is, in theory, you could do this. However, this aligns with uh, some guardrails in terms of ensuring that any developer or engineer looking at this knows that this particular usage of this state thing can be one of these four, right? And it also ensures, um, like, you don't make any typos. It ensures that casing is consistent throughout your usage of it, and it just makes things a little tidier. So for that reason, cases are pretty pretty important and pretty heavily used. Now, before we go to switches, I want to demonstrate that in Swift, you can shorthand a lot of things. So in a lot of languages, uh, enum exists. Enums exist overall. But in, switch, in, um, in Swift, you can shorthand things a lot. So we can actually just comma separate these and really shorten what we actually need to type. And this is perfectly correct. You're just assigning, um, you're just letting the enum know that these are the cases available. What you can also say is um, the enum inherits something. So enums, similar to classes and structs, can inherit um, particular other, like other classes. So we can say this inherits um, string. And what this allows us to do is we can assign a value to each of these. Let's say like we want a specific like string value. We can do this here. And to actually access it, we can access the string value off of the case. Now, I haven't showed you how to access it. So let's, um, let's get rid of this stuff for a second. And let's say we want to represent, um, let's do... current will be states dot, let's do in progress. So the way you represent this in code is first you put the actual enum and then with a dot, you basically add the chain notation of what particular case you want. Um, now a really cool thing about Swift is because there is this notion of type inferencing and the language is smart enough to understand um, what the type of something should be, you can actually really shorthand this again. So let's say we have a variable called current and it is of type states optional, right? So this, this current is going to be one of these cases, but also optional. So it could be nil. Let's say sticking with our example of starting an application, let's say the person starts it and this becomes in progress, right? This current variable. What you can do here is do current dot in progress. And the reason you don't need to do states before this dot in progress is because we've already told Swift the type of this is going to be some case off of this states enum. So we can shorthand the heck out of this. 
So you might sometimes see um, that people do this for colors. If you want to assign the color of, let's say, like a button, if you're making like um, if you're making like a iOS app, and let's not worry about this import UI kit for this purpose, but let's say we have color, and this is going to be a UI color. We could say this is like red. And let's make this color so it knows what we're talking about. And this is perfectly um, correct. Now, of course, you can also do this, and this is there's, there's nothing wrong with this, but it's just a little longer and more verbose, and people generally like to write the bare minimum amount of code for A, sake of being lazy, and B, sake of writing less code. So that's an enum for you. And let's say, sticking back with our state example, um, let's say we uh, added the inheritance of a string here, and let's say this equals one. We can say this dot raw value, and let's see if I need to do anything else. Well, it appears I can't do it in uh, this particular environment, but um. To get the actual string out, you would need to do dot raw value, and it's giving me an error at the moment because I'll have to set up a few other things around it, but that's a little tidbit that I did want to show you guys if you ever come across it. Um, not the most important thing, understanding enums is the fundamental here, but you, I just want you to know that you can indeed access whatever, you're, whatever string you're assigning this case to um, if you want it to be different for whatever reason. So let's get rid of this, and let's start talking about switch statements. Let's get rid of that. Now let's create a function check state, right? And a switch statement is basically similar to a K, uh, an enum in cases is a statement that switches over a variety of cases and a variety with like a variety of criteria. So in Swift, a switch statement has to be exhaustive. Now what that means is, um, before we write one out, is when you're switching over, let's say like numbers, and you know the numbers can be one to 10, you need to say switch number, case one, case two, case three, all the way to case 10. You have to basically provide the language um, instructions of what to do with each unique case. So what we're gonna do in our little example here, we're gonna have, current is going to be states dot in progress and in here we're going to switch current and the case can be um, in progress it's not wanting to cooperate today well it doesn't know that current is uh, states Let's just copy and paste it for the sake of uh, this not wanting to cooperate today. But we can basically do um, in progress, and we can basically do, what else did we have up here? Aborted. And let's put this in here, actually. There we go. Now we're making progress. So um, you need the curlies. We need to put what we're switching and the various cases. So we want to switch um, the in progress, the aborted. What else was in here? Completed. We also want, and what's the last one? Uh, we'll start. And you're going to put a colon after each of these. Now what this is basically saying is for each of the states that it potentially could be, what we want to do is some bit of code, right? And this is exhaustive because there is nothing else that this can be. And this is actually complaining because, A, we have an extra one here, and we need to put a break here for each of these. And I'll explain what a break is in two seconds. I apologize to my computer fan, but, um, basically, what we need to be doing here is in each of these statements, each of these potential cases, this state thing could be, this current, 
In this case, it's in progress. We want to check, hey, is it in progress? Is it aborted? It has to be one of these, right? And we want to execute some code. So let's say if it's in progress, we want to show like show um, info form or we want to show like a welcome, get started page or like anything. Um, but the point is, it, it's an exhaustive statement and you're switching between a variety of cases and it only goes into one, one or the other. Um, this could be modeled similarly as a if else condition, but you can imagine you can have, you'll have um, for, let's say you have an enum with like five cases, you'll have multiple if else's and it becomes a little hard to read and not the prettiest of looking code. Um, so people will use a switch statement. And this break basically signifies once you're done execute, let's say, okay, so let's say this current is in progress, which it is. Once you're done um, executing whatever code we put in here, so let's put like print here. And if we come down here, we'll see, well, we need to call this function. Let's come down here and call this function. And we should see here printed out, which we do, because current truly is in progress. We assigned it up here. Um, once you're done doing whatever bit of code is in the particular case that you got, got into, break just tells it, okay, finish up. So you can, you can think of this as synonymous to return. Um, you just wanna tell the switch statement, hey, I'm done. Um, you're good to go. Don't bother even looking at the code down here. Or let's say you got down here and this case was true. Don't bother coming down here. You're good to go, you're done, finish up. So that's the essence of a switch statement. And the reason, um, which hopefully is a little clearer now, the reason I wanted to pair switch statements up with case, cases and enums is because they kind of go hand in hand. So you can switch uh, cases in an enum, it's pretty common. You can also switch, of course, things like strings or numbers, or um, basically you can switch anything, anything that you can compare um, in the language. So if a number is one, two, three, four, five, or if a string is um, A, B, C, D, E, like whatever you wanna do, you can put it in a switch statement. But the important thing is it needs to be exhaustive. And if you don't make it exhaustive, um, and you don't exhaust all the possible conditions, Swift will yell at you and it'll actually give you a little button um, that says fix me and it'll, it'll be like, do you want me to add in all of the various cases? And if you hit it, it does it for you. But it's important to understand the concept. So with that being said, uh, minor review. So we went over enums and switches. Enums represent one or more cases. Switches can switch over multiple cases, uh, whether it's an enum or something else. And that's about it for today's lesson. Um, I'll be ending it here. And please do leave a like, comment, um, ask for help, reach out, follow, subscribe, share the video. Uh, let me know what I could improve. Let me know if there's anything I need to do better to explain these things to you. And I will see you guys in the next lesson.